Welcome. In this video, we're going to cover the scheduler overview within CyberCNS. So the scheduler is going to be found under the global settings, under settings, and then scheduler. So what the scheduler is, in a nutshell, is it allows you to do custom defined schedules for three major functions within CyberCNS. So first being our scan scheduler, where you can automatically define when you want scans to be kicked off. And we've got a list here of the scans that are supported. So all of the major scan types in the system can be initiated using that scan scheduler. Second, we've got a report scheduler, which is how you define when and how reports are delivered out of CyberCNS. So we've got a, you know, we've got standard reports out there. You could also use your custom reports if you've built any, and then you can schedule when those get delivered. And then thirdly, we've got our auto patch, which is the third party patching engine included in CyberCNS, where we can define when we wanna patch and what applications we wanna patch. Okay, so that's our auto patch scheduler. We're gonna go ahead and dive in here to the system and look at this together in an instance. So once we get logged into CyberCNS, we will be at the customer level. We we'll wanna make sure we're navigating back up to that global view. And on the left-hand side, we will find our scheduler. So if we tap on scheduler, here's gonna be the three major scheduling functions as I showed you in that slide. So we've got the scan, the report scheduler, and the auto patching. We'll just start with the scan scheduler. So as you can see here, if you've got any scheduled scans already in the system, they're gonna be displayed in the window. You'll get some heads up info about what those are, what they're scanning, how often they're scanning, so on and so forth. And then we'll also get some actions for existing scheduled scans to either go in and edit them, or if we no longer need them, delete them. We'll go ahead and add a new one just to take us through some of the options. So to add a new scheduler, you just tap the add button. We give this a name. So we'll call this our daily full scan. And then in the scan type, we have to tell the system what type of scan we're initiating. Okay, so we've got, again, all the different scans available within CyberCNS. Our documentation page does have details about each of these scans. If you're interested and want to see the document, we do have a documentation out, page out there for the scheduler that will talk about these uh, scans in detail uh, if you're interested in them. I'm going to go over them just kind of very quickly, the Cliff Notes version of them. So asset discovery, this will scan and do asset discovery based on discovery settings of a probe. So if you've got probes installed on the discovery settings of your probe where you define the IP ranges to scan, you provide credentials, you provide SNMP information, that's what the asset discovery will do is run the scans based on parameters on your probe and discovery settings. Full scan will kick off a full scan. It'll do the vulnerability scan. It'll do an SNMP scan. It'll do the firewall scan. Vulnerability, you know, it basically does the whole, the whole thing there. So full scan is everything in one. Active directory scan will use your LDAP and SMB scanning, and it will use the active directory credentials provided on the discovery settings of a probe. And that will scan specifically the AD environment. Your lightweight agent scan is for any of the lightweight agents installed, and those will kick off vulnerability scans and inventory scanning. So any agent that's installed with a, with a lightweight, that'll kick off vulnerability scans, baseline application updating, and um, inventory. So installed applications, installed extensions, ports running, services running, so on and so forth. We've got our PII scanning or personal identifiable information. So if you're using PI scanning, this will initiate the PI scans. We've got an SNMP scan. We've got an external scan for ex you know, scanning external IPs, static or IP range or a domain. We got an auto patch. Again, this is to kick off the auto patching. And then lastly, a firewall scan if you're using any of the firewall integrations. Okay, so those are the different scan types. Um, so again, Tell it which one we want to run. I'm going to go ahead and just do a full scan for this example. So we'll call this our daily full scan. Then we can select what companies the scan runs against. So you can either say, I want this to go against everybody, 
or you can pick off from the list the companies that you want to include in that scan and they will fill up. Okay? So you can either choose all or you can go ahead and multi-select using the checkboxes. Then you're going to define the schedule. So in this scenario, we've got some ranges pre-selected pre here for you. So if we want to say every day, tell it what time. If we do hourly, you can tell it how, you know, what at interval. We've got, you know, choices from one to 23 hours. We've got the weekly, so you can choose days of the week and the times. Days in the month, and then you can choose what days, what calendar day months that you want to run it on. And then yearly, again, defining the months, the days, and the time. So the scheduler has complete flexibility to cover almost every and any scenario that you need to schedule scans on. So for our daily scan, I'm just gonna say, let's do this every day and we'll just use nine o'clock a.m. Save that. Once you add a scan schedule in, it'll refresh the screen, it'll populate your list here and you'll be looking at your scan. So again, I'll just update this on, uh, I'm sorry, if you look at the updated column, we can find the newest one we just added, which was right here, our daily full scan. And I can see it's a full scan every day, nine o'clock runtime. Okay. And if you had any filters applied, you would you obviously would see them in the screen. And as I mentioned, once a scan's created, if you wanted to edit it or remove it, you can just use the actions and tap that choice and that'll go ahead and kick it off. Okay. You'll also notice we've got checkboxes on the left. So if I multi-selected some of these, you've got some global actions here where you can delete and clean up the screen in mass if you needed to. Otherwise, the scans will kick off on their on their schedules as defined. Okay, so that's our scan, scan scheduler. Second will be our report scheduler. This will work very similar to scan scheduler, except it's for the reports out of CyberCNS. So again, any reports that are already scheduled, you'll see them in the window. We've got the heads up display on what parameters are set within that scheduler. And then we've got our actions to edit, delete. And then again, we've got our global actions if we wanted to mass delete. Same, inter same interface layout. We'll go ahead and do add, take you through this one. So this, give it a name. And again, just as a tip, I always find it better to give it a name after we define the schedule. Sometimes you don't really know what the name should be until you define a schedule. So I like to kind of work backwards on that. So I'm going to skip the name and we're just going to kind of work through the rest of the fields and then we'll give it a name when we're done. So the first thing is what companies do we want this to run against? So if I wanted a report delivered to me for a particular customer or maybe for all my customers, I can indicate that here. I'll just go ahead and choose our three test companies. We can exclude companies. So again, if I was choosing maybe the all companies option, and then I wanted to exclude a couple or a, a, some, a test company, for example, or our in, own internal company, maybe we don't want to get a report for us. We can exclude companies using these checkboxes. Then we've got the reports that we want to select. These are all of the reports built into the CyberCNS system, whether they're in the standard reports, the report builder reports that you, you've executed, these are here, and you can go ahead and search for reports too using the search bar. So maybe you want to find things with the word computers in it. So we've got Active Directory computers and Azure computers. Maybe I'm looking for user accounts. Maybe I'm looking for vulnerabilities. Maybe I'm looking for network stuff, right? So you can kind of type what you're looking for if you know what you're targeting. If you don't know, you can obviously just scroll through and pick off the ones that you like. So if you, you know, if you just scroll through this and you say, hey, I want to go ahead and include agents report, I want to include asset report, and I'd like to do a browser extension report as an example. I'll just select those three. The type is how we want the output of that report sent to us. So we've got PowerPoint, Excel, Word doc, PDF. You can choose one or any combination of those. So if you wanted to get this in a PowerPoint and a document and a PDF and an Excel file, you could choose all three or you can choose any combination of them. Enter password. This is optional. If you want to put a password in here, this is if you want to send the report encrypted when it gets delivered. 
It's important to also note that these will be delivered via your email integration that you have set up in CyberCNS. So you'll have to have an integration configured for email and the email that you configure is how these will be delivered. And again, that password, if you enter a password here, that will be used to encrypt that report and the end user must have that password to access that report. If you don't need to encrypt it, then you can leave the password field blank and send it off. Then we've got the scheduler. Again, same options as our scan scheduler where we can define daily, hourly, weekly, monthly, yearly. And then when you choose an option, you'll get the additional breakouts here. So on a report, maybe I just wanna get this, you know, on a, on a Monday morning, let's say 8 a.m. Monday mornings, I want these reports. So now that I kind of know what these reports are, when I'm getting them, uh, and also what reports I'm receiving, I might then give it a, a descriptive name. So this just might be weekly agent slash asset slash report, right? And that might be what I call this. And again, you can call it whatever you want. And then who gets the report here? So we could start typing in names. So maybe Ryan at connectsecure.com. And we add. And if you want to add additional names, you just start typing. So it could be, you know, name at domain.com. Add. And you can add as many recipients of that report that you want. You need to remove them. You tap the trash. That'll remove them. And then lastly, if you wanna do filters on the particular reports, we do have an ability to do some filtering down here. So we do have you know, pre-canned filters that you can apply to your reports. If you guys are interested in seeing more about the report filters, I do have a reporting video that we've done out on the channel where we go into report builder, we go into report customization and we talk real heavily about filtering options. So if you wanna see some of that, We've do got some content out there to take you through additional filter options. Once you're done with your report parameters, give it a save. And again, once that save is completed, it will show up in our window. So here's that weekly agent asset report we just made. I can see again, when it's on schedule, what time it's arriving, when it was created and when it was last updated. Okay, so that's how you schedule out the reporting, very simple. Lastly, we've got the auto patch. So this is where we can define a schedule and what, what uh, third-party applications we want to be patched by CyberCNS. You must have your patching enabled. So again, to use this feature, we'll wanna make sure under global settings, under our patching that we've got patching enabled. Basically, it's a toggle to turn it on and agree to the EULA or the end user license. Once that's on, patching is enabled. And here's where we can start to define that schedule. So again, we give it a name. Actually, here, let me back up. If you had schedules defined in the previous screens, as you saw, they would be populated here and we would see them and have some editing and removing options, just like the previous two screens. Since we don't have anything, we've got no data. We're gonna go ahead and add one today. Okay, so we'll define a patch schedule. So we're gonna call this um, how about we'll call this daily patching. And I'm just going to use Adobe as our example today. Again, tip, sometimes naming your patching is better after you build it because sometimes you don't really know what you're going to do. So just keep that in mind. If you guys want to change the name after the fact, you can always do that. Choose our companies. Who are we auto patching? Are we doing everybody or are we doing certain customers? So I can define customers or I can use the all, all companies option. To remove them, tap the X, boom, boom, there's my three, easy enough. Then you've got included applications and we've got excluded applications. So if you wanna include for patching, you can use all apps. This will do all applications within the cyber CNS system that we support patching for. If you wanna call out specific apps, like maybe I wanna look for Adobe stuff. So if I do Adobe, I can see, all right, we do Reader, Creative Cloud, Shockwave, AIR, and Acrobat. And I can include all my Adobe titles there, okay? If you wanted to exclude particular things, so man, maybe if this is an Adobe one, maybe I just wanted to exclude the Shockwave player out of here. I would make sure that I exclude it, and then obviously we wouldn't wanna have it included. 
So this is if I wanted to do some inclusion and exclusion on the Adobe daily patching. And then of course our schedule. Again, just like the scan and report scheduler, we've got the flexibility to cover any and all scenarios to patch. So every day, we tell it what start and end time our patch window is. Weekly, what days of the week, and again, what is our patch window? Days in a month, we select the days, and we pick the patch window time. So each of these will include the date, the times, and the patch windows. Okay, so... I'll just say every day and we'll run our patch window. For example, let's just say 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. There's no reason I'm picking those values other than I just randomly decided that's what I was going to use. You guys have complete control, flexibility over this. I would align this up against your current maintenance schedules or patch windows that are already established. Many of our partners are already doing MSP services with their clients. You've probably got a tool out there, an RMM tool that can do patch management and you've already got patching policies in place. This is just, you know, again, a second way to come behind and, and really make sure it's being done. So I would try to align these schedules maybe to what works best with your clients and or with your current patch cycles. So just keep that in mind as a tip. So once I've got this schedule defined, I can go ahead and save that. Once it saves, we'll get a preview in this window of what we're patching here. So again, I, I can see it's daily patching of Adobe every day, six to 10, when it was created and updated. As I mentioned, once we've got one in here, if we wanted to remove this or click edit and go back into it, this is how we jump back in and make edits to it. So maybe someone said, you know what, let's go ahead and do this for all our customers. We're going to swap that to all companies and give that a save. Easy as that to make updates, All right? So that's our patch scheduler. Um, real, real simple to use, real easy to navigate. Uh, if any of the partners are needing help with your patch schedules or having problems with it, you can always get in touch with us, contact our support team, you know, support at cybercns.com, put a ticket in, we'll get you some help. Um, if there's other, you know, information or content around the schedulers that you'd like to see, maybe some more examples of patching schedules. Um, again, we'd be happy to, to put those out. Just let us know. You can, you can either comment these videos, we'll be watching those, or you can email us directly. We've got the education at connectsecure.com inbox up. Uh, we're watching it, we're monitoring it. So let us know. Thanks again for your guys' time. Thanks for watching.